Welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Steve Rosales. With me today is a Belmontian of repute, great repute, Colonel Michael Callanan, United States Marine Corps retired, longtime Belmont resident. Hello, Michael. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing great. Thank you. When you're dealing with August, you think August 7th, which is Purple Heart Day. A national day of observance. So you've been involved with Purple Heart Day in the past. Why don't you tell us a little about the history of Purple Heart Day and what Belmont uh, is planning? Steve, thank you very much. And for those listeners, would like to first and foremost invite everyone to join us this Sunday at 1 p.m. August 7th. Um, since 2014, um, across the United States, August 7th, no matter what day it falls on, um, is a unique day in that we observe uh, Purple Heart Day that as Steve has mentioned, is an honor of those who've sacrificed uh, in our nation's uh, battles uh, to defend our democracy. And that is uh, an award uh, more commonly known as the Purple Heart that has a long history. In fact, it's America's oldest military award that's still presented to this day. Uh, during the Revolutionary War, it was called the Fidelity Medallion, and then it later became the badge of military merit. That over time, the likes of General MacArthur and President Roosevelt had redesigned it uh, to what it looks like in the present day, which is a, a caricature um, from the side of General Washington, President Washington, um, on a purple uh, ribbon medal that is awarded, again, for those uh, who are wounded in battle or killed and to commemorate their sacrifice. Uh, the only uh, US president uh, to have, you know, to be eligible to wear the Purple Heart is President Kennedy. Um, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 million recipients over time. Um, we don't know how many we have in Belmont, but we know we have a number and we invite those um, who are able to come down or those whose relatives um, have come down or those who want to show support again to the sacrifice that our men and women in the military continue to make um, abroad uh, this Sunday. And again, it's a, it's a very special uh, occasion. It'll be um, a guest speaker, um, will be a general uh, Paul Miner, another of Belmont's uh, own, and the number two in the Massachusetts National Guard. Um, we'll be also hearing from Mark Palillo and John uh, Schwisser uh, will make the prayer offering. So again, it should be from 1 to 1.30. We don't have uh, inclement weather plan. We'll be there rain or shine. And we hope to see you, uh, your family, and anyone interested in helping us support those who've made this sacrifice in attendance this coming Sunday. So Steve, that's it in a nutshell. Um, but, you know, again, happy to take any or field any questions that you or the team may have. Well, let me, let, let's, let's just go back. So, okay, so the, Belmont has done this in the past, at least my recent memory. You've had some recent experience in this going back only several years, correct? That's right, Steve. I, two years ago, um, was the guest speaker when it was held at the library, and, and Paul Much, uh, retired sergeant major of the Marines, um, was last year's featured speaker. And that was down at the memorial, the Belmont Veterans Memorial, um, down at Clay Pit Pond, which, if you haven't seen it, in and of itself is another reason to go down and, and just see that tremendous um, representation um, in which the names of those who've fallen and our nation's wars, um, Belmont residents are listed. Well, yes, okay, so it's for, so this Sunday, uh, this Sunday, uh, August 7th, 1 p.m., and it's being held where? Down at Clay Pit Pond, the Belmont uh, Veterans Memorial Park, the newly named Belmont Veterans Memorial Park, down on Clay Pit Pond, uh, where you can enter from the corner of uh, Underwood Street and Concord Ave. You'll see the uh, the uh, stone wall entrance and come on down, as they say. It begins, what, 1 o'clock, correct? 
Yes, sir. One, 1 p.m. this I Sunday. Would, I would expect it to be probably a half an hour or so for a ceremony. Um, invite everybody that, uh, that would be interested. And if those, of course, the Purple Heart recipients, their families, uh, it, it should be a nice event. And again, so uh, Brigadier General, uh, Assistant Adjutant General Paul Miner, uh, you say he's a Belmontian. Yes, indeed, our guest speaker. And he's, um, again, just uh, been advanced to that post and uh, a real leadership uh, position in our state and uh, an honor to have him in attendance and officiating um, at Sunday's event. Okay, so come one, come all, rain or shine. Uh, yeah, the Marines and our servicemen, they, they fought in snow, <laughs> rain, blazing heat. 72 degree, nice weather, didn't really matter, right? They, they did what they needed to do and they served with pride and honor. We thank you for that. Now, while I have you here, Colonel, so uh, you also have another hat. Uh, you are now still the, the co-chair along with Ron Blanchett of the Belmont Veterans Memorial Committee who organized and put together and constructed that Veterans Memorial down there at Clay Pit Pond. So it was dedicated in November of 2019, um, but we're always looking for additional donations and uh, for maintenance and ongoing you know, repairs and to keep the place in the type of condition that it so deserves. And we have a brick program, do we not? I'm, I serve on that committee with you, although uh, I'm, I'm one of the civilian members. Uh, but we do have a brick uh, uh, dedication program to help fundraise. Can you tell us a little about that? Sure, can, Steve. Thank you. And along with Ronnie Blanchett, uh, former Belmont uh, Police Chief, I'm one of the co-chairs. And if you go to BelmontVets1Phrase.com, uh, um, you'll see a nice video of the dedication on 2019, and then also how you can put an order in uh, for a brick to remember um, anyone, um, you know, that served or any message that you'd like to show and support doesn't have to be connected with a Belmont relative um, or anything like that. And the funds are used to maintain uh, that wonderful um, location right now at the corner, as you've mentioned, of Underwood Street and Concord Avenue right by the new high school. Um, and it really is, uh, it is tremendous. And it was um, all uh, due to the support and generous donations of those who were able to fund it. Um, and really it's been 10 years in the making and dedicated in 2019, but that's where we'll be on Sunday at 1 p.m. And uh, please consider um, you know, a brick donation if you haven't already done so and take a look at them uh, when you come and join us on Sunday. Well, I appreciate that. It's belmontvets.com, belmontvets.com. So, well, there you have it, Mike. Any, any, any final comments here to everybody? No, just in today's uh, day and age, just remember all those that continue to serve uh, a greater cause than just themselves uh, to defend our wonderful country, our democracy, and our way of life. There's a lot of folks out there uh, doing that now. Well, I thank you. Okay, so to recap, Belmont will be celebrating National Purple Heart Day this coming Sunday, August 7th, 2022, 1 p.m. I guess that's, uh, what's that in military time? 1,300 hours. 1,300 hours, okay. 1,300 hours. I had to do some, I had to do some quick uh, math in my head here. Down at the Belmont Veterans Memorial, corner of Concord Avenue and Underwood Street in beautiful scenic Clay Pit Pond. Hope to see you there. Until next time, I'm Steve Rosales. You've been watching News Now. Take care. Thank you, Steve.